So this is the start of a new series where I take an IC either that I'm suggested to by someone or that I just find while looking on DigiKey or Mauser. I take that IC, build a custom board around it, and it lets us evaluate it, see what features it has, see how we can best use it, so we can potentially use it in a full PCB design later. Now the first video that I'm going to be doing, or the first IC for this video, is based around the SIC 45 buck converter. And it, it takes a lot to get me excited about a buck converter. I use them all the time, but this absolutely does it. For one, I, I don't know if you can hear the, uh, the fans from my DC load and power supply, but right now this tiny board on one ounce copper is sourcing just about 15 amps at five volts being supplied at a nominal 12 volts, which is at 6.6 .6 amps. So I think it comes out to like 85, 90% efficiency. And the junction temperature is like 80 degrees C. So almost or just around half of what it's rated for. And to top it off, to make it even cooler, it has a complete I squared C PM bus. So you can control with an Arduino or any other microcontroller what the output voltage, what the current limits are, pretty much anything you can configure, you can use over I squared C, or you can just use the strapping pins and you don't even need an I squared C bus. So if this is something that you're interested in, I'm actually also considering starting to sell some of these. I have a link down below. Let me know if that's something you would be interested in. And if you've been following along with this, uh, with the live streams lately, you have a pretty good idea about this board because I went into the design of it already. But if not, let me catch you up to speed. So like I said in the intro, this is based off of the SIC 45X series with the X denominating what specific current capacity each can handle. This is on the lowest model, which is the 15 amp limit. They also make a 25 and a 40 amp limit. Of course, with the higher current models, you're going to need a heat sink. And like I had also said, this has pin strapping pins or strapping pins. So you can set the output voltage, the frequency directly just by using pull down resistors, or you can use it over I squared C which is a really nice feature because it gives you the ability to use I squared C or just use it like this and just run it when you go to turn it on. When using I squared C, there's a ton of commands, a ton of registers. You can set what the current limit is. You can set the output voltage. You can set the frequency. Pretty much anything you can think of, you can set, which gives you just a ton of flexibility to where if you don't know exactly what your application is going to call for, you can always do it later in software. And something that was new to me, which has a really cool impact on this board, is it uses this really neat constant on time regulation for the PWM signal to keep the output voltage in regulation. And what that simply means is you can use as low ESR capacitors on the output side as you want. Normally, you, you have to have some sort of ESR out there or you're going to have such a small ripple that the scheme that detects the voltage is going to not be able to detect it and it's gonna go haywire. With this, it uses a differential pair to sense the output voltage and it just uses that set voltage to keep it in regulation. And the result of this is we're able to parallel a bunch of low ESR caps on the output side to keep the voltage ripple to be unbelievably small. At 14 and a half amps, I was able to measure less than 100 millivolts, and it's probably a lot smaller than that. It's a, it's a really hard measurement to do accurately. So it's probably like 50 millivolts. And normally to get that type of low ripple, you have to use some sort of LC filter to again, keep that ripple from being so small to where it screws up the regulation. And specifically for this eval board, it has a input and output LED so you can see if it has power on the input side and the output side. There's a 20 amp input and output screw terminal which handles up to like I think 18 gauge, 16 gauge wires so you can support pretty much any wire you would use. There's a hardwired enable disable jumper so when testing or just messing with the I squared C bus you can simply enable or disable the output regulator. 
And for the I squared C bus, there's an entire pin header to access all of the communication lines in something that ended up being kind of a pain to implement, but I think turned out really cool is the regulator outputs a constant five volt voltage. So we're using that to let the pull up resistors be selectable with three options. You can either keep it with no jumper so there will be no pull up whatsoever. That's useful of course, if you have another microcontroller talking to this, which also is talking to other ICs and there's already a pull up on that chain you can pull up to that five volt line on the IC, or you can supply your own voltage, most likely a nominal 3.3, and use that as the pull up if all of your other ICs are running at 3.3 volts. And this board was designed with EMC in mind. It has an input filter with a ferrite bead and a bunch of ceramic capacitors hooked up in parallel. And further to reduce the EMC, this, this could have been on a two layer board, but it's using a four layer stack up with the top and bottom being power and signal, and then the two inner layers being ground. So no matter where the route is, it has a reference plane in the adjacent layer without having to go through the core of the board. And last but not least, it has three mounting holes with M2.5 sizing. I wanted to have four on here, but there really wasn't space for it, and it would have required enlarging the board just to fit that, which I didn't think was a good trade-off. And with the board fully designed, I went and ordered some bare PCBs, and of course, with the way that everything is nowadays, there was quite a bit of a delay from DHL, but they finally made it here, and all that was left was to get it assembled. With the board fully assembled, there was obviously only one thing left to do, and that was to power it up and see if it works. And I did this on the live stream, and the first thing I always start with on a new design is I'll hook up a multimeter to the input side and make sure that the resistance is high tens of kilo ohms, if not into the mega ohms. And that's just to make sure there's not a dead short that's gonna really screw something up. And I tried that and it was perfect, so then hooked up the power supply and a light DC load. And of course, because I'm such a professional and I'm such a proficient board and electronics designer, it worked first try and there were absolutely no issues. Not quite. So when I hooked it up to power, there was the output LED was flashing at a pretty rapid rate, but I could still see it with my eyes. And then the biggest giveaway was I could hear an audible click or hum and in the audible range you're in the 10k ish range 
and this switches at a megahertz. So I obviously shouldn't be hearing any noise on here because it's way above the audible range. And it took quite a while of troubleshooting. I think we were on it for like at least an hour, half hour, 45 minutes, something like that. And then someone in the live stream is, goes by random name. He had the idea that when, and if you were watching with pretty good eyes, while I was assembling the board and the montage and while it was reflowing, you noticed that two of the resistors were replaced with a jumper of wire. So this is actually not the original board that I assembled. So what was the issue is on the differential pairs that sense the output voltage, there was an app note that said to reduce jitter for long distance measurements you can do an RC filter, which helps obviously keep down the noise as a low pass filter. But somehow during the design live streams, it got portrayed to me from the app note to just use two 10K resistors and call it a day. And that obviously didn't work. What it did is it essentially, I'm, I'm assuming the op amp that was sensing the voltage, the capacitance on those input pins were not being charged fast enough because of the 10K resistors. So it was making it so it was unable to sense the output voltage. So once I removed the resistors and just shorted it out, it worked perfect. And like I said, it can source up to 15 amps from an input supply up to 20 volts. And with the adjustable output voltage, the efficiency ends up being anywhere in the 80 to 95% range, which is unbelievably good for a regulator that's this high of a current limit. And a user in the Discord who goes by the name White Rabbit, he wrote a Arduino library for this, and you can interface with any Arduino board over I squared C. And it's the library is not complete by any stretch, but it does most of the core functions. You can read right to it. Other than some weird bugs with a few of the registers, it is, it is pretty complete. So I'll have the link for that in the description, as well as, again, if you are interested in buying this, the link will also be in the description. And that pretty well wraps up everything with this board. It is an unbelievable IC, and I think it was a great candidate for the first IC for this evaluation board series. And if you have any suggestions for any other ICs you'd like me to look at, or just any suggestions for future videos, as always, please let me know, and I will see you guys in the next video.